Portland, number 12, Western Kentucky, number 5, Illinois in the South Region. We take you there live, Kevin Harlan and Dan Bonner. Welcome to the NCAA tournament in the first round from the sold-out Rose Garden in Portland, Oregon. 12th seed, Western Kentucky, number 5 seed, Illinois. The winner will play Gonzaga. They just took care of Akron 77-64. Ken McDonald in his first season as the coach of the Hilltoppers, a guy who played some professional basketball overseas in college basketball at Providence for Rick Patino. And here you take a look now at what Western Kentucky will throw out there. Orlando Mendez Valdez, a terrific point guard. There is no Chester Frazier for coach Bruce Weber. He is the defensive glue of this Illini team. They come in it with an at-large berth from the Big Ten. Our officials tonight, Michael Stewart, who has officiated one Final Four, Rick Batzel, who is in his third NCAA tournament and making his NCAA tournament debut from the Pac-10 is Kevin Brill. And tonight's game is brought to you in High Definition TV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and global media. Western Kentucky, the Sun Belt Conference champions, 24 and 8. In there someplace is Chester Frazier with a right hand injury, subsequent surgery. In a practice yesterday, he could only stand and watch. The senior, Frazier from Baltimore, will not be a part of this team in their postseason run. And we'll just have to wait and see what kind of an impact that has. He is a great defender, really sets the tone for an Illinois defense that is among the best in the Big Ten, and that makes it among the best in the country. They hold their opponents to under 40% field goal shooting, but that is with Chester Frazier, and this is a talented Western Kentucky team. They beat Louisville during the season. Orlando Mendez Valdez, A.J. Slaughter, a really, really solid guard tandem. Fighting Illini finished 24 and 9, 11 and 10, make it 11 and 7 in the Big Ten Conference. And here we go with Tisdale jumping against Evans, and the Illini will control it. And here comes Dimitri McKinney, sophomore from Bellwood, Illinois. Man-to-man -man defense for Western Kentucky. As Dale lost it, picked up on the play by Jeremy Evans. And then Meacham comes back, Swatter regains it. And he lost the ball with some opening <laughs> game jitters. A little bit of a hectic start. Yes. <laughs> Western Kentucky was 24-8. and eight. Here is Stefan Pettigrew. And Calvin Brock is the one taking the place, as we mentioned, of Chester Frazier. He was there defending right there. And we take a look at Orlando Mendez Valdez. Did not start last year. Did not start as a sophomore, but he started every game the senior from San Antonio. And McKinney again. Brock. Tisdale on top of the defense of Evans on him. And Illinois is basically a jump shooting team. They don't really attack the basket. They don't go to the free throw line that much. Here is Trent Meacham. He grew up in Champaign. Shot clock is at 12. Mike Davis, a terrific shooter. Mid-range shot is exquisite. Stephon Pettigrew is defending on the play. And Pettigrew, you know, that is a really tough assignment. Pettigrew is used to guarding taller inside guys, but Davis may be too much for him. And look at Slaughter got the mismatch on Tisdale, the center, and close by him for the deuce. <laughs> Anytime you're a guard and you see that seven-foot guy out there on you, you know you can put it down and go to the basket. Meacham, who began his college career at Dayton. This is McKinney for three over Mendez Valdez. And here comes the Hilltopper guard, E.J. Swanee. Up to play inside by Caruso. Meacham, McKinney, guarded by Slaughter at the other end. Davis a screen, Slaughter fights through it, a three by McKinney, and picked up by Orlando Mendez Valdez. He was the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year. Meacham picks him up. 
to five. Pettigrew watches Evans inside, and Evans can't get it with Tisdale defending with the rebound by Calvin Bryant. Evans was worried about getting his shot blocked. He just got to take. He has to take it strong to the basket. Screen by Davis. That knocks out Carus. Oh, and a great rejection inside by Jeremy Evans. Slaughter is bumped from behind by McCamey, who picks up the Illini foul. His first. And McCamey, again, the Illinois doesn't take the ball to the basket very much, but that time Evans is waiting for him. Boy, that's a good blocked shot. He did a great job keeping his body away from McCamey. I think he's, he's coming out of the game because I think he's a little excited. That adrenaline. <laughs> Got to get his second win. DJ Magley will take his place. Western Kentucky. A team to beat Louisville early in the season. Karouche, a jump shot over Davis. Rebound inside by Brock, and here comes Dimitri McKinney. Brock, screen by Tisdale. Davis again. Karouche is on here. Now they switch on defense, and Karouche goes on McKinney. Ball is knocked away. Magley fighting for it. There's a turnover. Here comes Western Kentucky the other way. Mendez Valdez. A nice little pass inside for Magley. Well, you've got to catch that yep. ball if you're Magley. That was a marvelous pass by Mendez Valdez. If he catches that ball, it's an easy basket. Brent Meacham. He'll slither down the lane and put it up in the room to fire. Well, I think you're going to have to give up some of those if you're Western Kentucky. You've got to be concerned about Illinois' ability to shoot the basketball. Now, you don't want to make them that easy, but uh, sometimes they're going to drive around, and you've got to get out and pressure those jump shooters. Here's Stefan Pettigrew outside for Sergio Caruso. Sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. Davis defending him. Shot clock at 12. Rebound by Davis. That was not a good possession. Belts it from behind. Looked like maybe Magley knocked him astray. Magley did. Picks up his first personal foul. They had a home record of 13-0, did the Hilltoppers. And overall in the Sun Belt Conference, they were 15-3. And this is a basketball program with a tremendous tradition. 21 NCAA appearances. Ken McDonald, young man who his mentor, I guess, is Rick Barnes. He coached with Rick Barnes at Clemson, coached with Rick Barnes at Texas. He was an assistant coach under Dennis Felton at Western Kentucky and Georgia. And now he's getting a chance to run his own program. And they've had tremendous success. Jeff Jordan, the son of Michael Jordan, is in the game. Taking the place of Brock. Here's Tisdale from outside, defended by Magley and picked up by Mendez Valdez. Down court for Pettigrew. He released early. He works on Davis inside. What a pass by Mendez Valdez. He's got his head up. He's looking down the court the entire time. Alex Legion has also checked in for the Illini. He is a transfer from Kentucky. He's got it right now. And this is the 16-footer Magley there with the rebound. And if you're Western Kentucky, I think you want to push at every opportunity you get to try to beat this Illinois defense down the court. Pettigrew is screened by Magley. Tisdale came up, and that's a triple by Stefan Pettigrew. The scoring average continues to rise. From last year to this, it's gone up from four points to 13 points a game for the Hilltoppers. And he can be a good... Very tough matchup. Pettigrew watching Davis. Davis is tough matchup. Rebound by E.J. Slaughter, the junior from Shelbyville, Kentucky. So far, the guards, Slaughter and Mendez Valdez, are leading the rebounding for Western Kentucky. Good trap on the point guard. This is Pettigrew now putting it over Jeff Jordan. Picked up by Trent Meacham. And Illinois has got numbers. Three on two. And on the fly, Meacham. Mendez Valdez got the rebound and was shoved on the play and a foul with the Hilltoppers on top by three. And about five minutes gone here in a final game from Portland. Great pass by Mendez Valdez to Stefan Pettigrew. CBSSports.com is your destination for up to the minute NCAA tournament coverage, real time scoring, expert analysis, and video highlights from every game at CBSSports.com. Western Kentucky on top 7 to 4 over the line. And Illinois has started 2 of 9 from the field. Western Kentucky has already hit a 3, and they've got an advantage on the glass. Here's Anthony Sell. Mendez Valdez, screened by Magnus. Switch on defense. Davis now goes on Mendez Valdez. 
He'll pop the three. Magley with the rebound and wide open inside for the quick two. Boy, Magley on the inside. Jeff Jordan and Trent Meacham just too small to stop him. Western Kentucky on a 7 0 run right now. Here is McKinney. Meacham with a runner. Little trickle in. He now has four. I think Illinois must do a better job having some patience on offense, but also taking the ball to, toward the basket. Mm -hmm. Don't want to settle for those outside jump shots. Here's Benny Stanley, a junior from Richmond, Virginia. But right now, McKinney is on him. He'll penetrate. Outside for A.J. Slaughter, launching a three. Dominique Keller has come in for the alignment. And here comes Jeff Jordan the other way, and A.J. Slaughter and him got tangled up, and that is a foul. It goes on Swatter for the first time. It's a proud tradition, this Western Kentucky program. 39th season with 20 wins. That's sixth all time. You take a look at North Carolina, Kentucky, UCLA, Duke, well, Louisville. I mean, Western Kentucky, you talk about the Jim McDaniel played there, Clem Haskins played there. I mean, they have had a tremendous tradition. The EA Diddle Arena, one of the great places in the country to view a basketball game or to play a basketball game. Slaughter is on McKinney who decides to drive. And that's, I think that's, that's one of the things that Illinois needs to do. You have to keep the Western Kentucky defense honest. You cannot allow them just to get right up on you out on the perimeter. You've got to be able to go by. Here comes Shelly, screen inside. Laid by Jeremy Evans. It's out of bounds. Shot clock at 24 seconds. There's a look at Bruce Weber, now in his sixth season for the Illini. He recorded the most wins, 128 in Big Ten history, by a head coach after his first five seasons. They go inside, and Evans, this is the alley up on the inbound, and Jeff Jordan will race the other way. McKinney thought about three, Davis the screen, they switch on defense, and it's inside to Davis, McKinney with a great pass. Well, that's a great pass, and Davis did a nice job going to the open area. There's Illinois out in transition, and I think their ability to find Davis in transition is going to be key tonight. Meacham with the steal, ahead to Dominic Keller. He had a picked off by Orlando Mendez Valdez. Here comes Pettigrew off to Swatter. Mendez Valdez for three. Right over Jeff Jordan. It's a two-point Western Kentucky lead. They've been up by as many as five. The Illini have led by as many as two. Now you've got to find Mendez Valdez in transition. That's his 92nd three-point basket of the year. He's in over 30 now in the last nine games. Well, now here's Mendez Valdez. He's coming up the court, and you just have to know where he is. Nobody from Illinois looking at him. Still nobody looking at him. They finally, Jeff Jordan comes out to try to uh, harass him, but he's, I mean, he's outstanding shooting that three. Tom Pettigrew picked up the foul. That is his first for the Hilltoppers. At the free throw line is Jeff Jordan, who came to the Illini program as a walk-on. He had an academic scholarship. He is now on full athletic scholarship. And if you're wondering, we don't know if Michael, his father, is in attendance tonight. We know he's watching. We just don't know if he's here. Now, sometimes when he is, he, he sneaks around and will we'll find his way into some suite for the obvious reasons of getting mine. Outside. Anthony Salad. He gets a nice screen from Pettigrew. Karush. And Mendez Valdez. Reach him there. Screen by Evans. Mendez Valdez with a three. Hit on the neck and popping it in from the triple territory. His second three in a row. He's got six. And that was not an easy shot. The Illinois <laughs> found him that time, defended it very well. Yeah, the degree of difficulty on that one was off the charts. Here is Jordan. And here is Tisdale, who spins by Evans and trying to hook him. And that is a foul. It'll go on Western Kentucky with 11.49. The defense was there. Mendez Valdez hits the deck and hits the three for the Hilltoppers. Back in late November, Western Kentucky upset Louisville, the number one overall seed in this tournament. A.J. Slaughter poured in 25 points, leading the Hilltoppers to the big upset, 68-54. It should be noted they played that on a neutral floor in Nashville, Tennessee. Preseason tournament, nonetheless, that resonated 
As Louisville got out of the block slowly, then really picked up momentum. They were triggered by a big win over UK, a game you saw on CBS, and a last second shot by Edgar Sosa. And from that point on, they were really on their way. Trent Meacham got a screen from Tisdale and exploits it by getting the open shot. And inside, Sergio Carouche comes down with the rebound. AJ Slaughter the other way, and Mike Davis picks him up on the defensive switch. So let's see now. AJ Slaughter tries to exploit the speed matchup. He does. Rebound by Brock, who is back in. To McKinney. Good ball rotation. The Meacham for three, and the rebound is pulled down by Carouche. He's got five already. Slaughter the other way. Mendez, Valdez. It's Carouche for three. Good, another three. It's over Davis, and Western Kentucky is plus 12 points beyond the arc to start this game. And that's bad news for Illinois because Carouche is not one of their better three-point shooters. But Western Kentucky has been getting open looks in transition. Davis goes inside to Tisdale, who fires that shot. Into the defense of Jeremy Evans. And here comes Mendez Valdez, who, if healthy, Chester Frazier would be guarding. Roosh in on Davis. What a green inside. Tisdale knocks it away. Here comes McKinney at three on two. Can they exploit with the run? And they do. Brock will finish it off well. That's really a nice job by Brock to keep running. I actually didn't know whether McKinney was going to pass that ball or not. That's a tough pass to catch in transition. Nice job by Brock. Mendez Valdez, Brock fell. Keeney comes in to fill the void nicely, but that leaves an open shooter. And a three by Slaughter, and Illinois pays. Slaughter exploits. It's raining threes in here. Western Kentucky doing a great job finding that line. They're five for eight. And McKinney with the drive, misses the close in shot. Pettigrew is defending out of bounds off Pettigrew and off of Western Kentucky. We've talked about Western Kentucky and their ability to get out in transition and Orlando Mendez Valdez just a guy who's really good at seeing the court finding open guys and A.J. Slaughter he is an excellent three-point shooter he can be very streaky and once he gets hot and gets rolling he becomes very very dangerous. There goes Evans and comes Matt Maresca a senior from Bowling Green Kentucky Anthony Sally has taken the place of Mendez Valdez who leads the Hilltoppers with six. The Illini inbounding in Tisdale as it Maresca on him. Sally will watch the dribbling Meacham. McKinney slaughter guarding him. Maresca watching Tisdale. And that's a very nice play by Maresca. That's what he's in the game for. He's not in there to score points. They just want him to eat up some minutes and play pretty good defense. And he does right there. Tisdale tries to get the turnaround, but Maresca forces him to, into an off-balance shot. You move your feet. You stay between your man and the basket. Generally, good things happen. Jordan comes in for Meacham for Illinois. So Jeff is back in the game. And Tisdale leaves. Dominique Keller has come back in for the Illini. So it's Keller and McKamey. Davis, Brock, and Jordan. That's the Illini five. Nine and a half to play. A.J. Slaughter is out there. Magley is in the game. Maresta. But the ball right now is Sally. And on the wing is Caruso. That's the five for the Hilltoppers on the floor. Magley with it. Slaughter. Magley with a screen. Sally. Shot clock is down to seven. Carouche with a three. Magley with the putback. He puts it up and in. His dad played in Kansas. So he's just given Western Kentucky a 10-point lead. And again, that's two offensive rebounding baskets now by Magley. Western Kentucky getting good production from guys coming off the bench. Kamey works in on Slaughter. Brock. Karush defending on the close, the missed triple. Keller can't get it. Sally comes the other way. Karush is underneath. All alone. What a pass by Anthony Sally. Oh, and the Hilltoppers are running right over the Big Ten Illini. A 16 to 3 run. 8.28 to play. Sally with a look away and a left hand, and Karush with the flush.
Western Kentucky has been zeroing in with the long ball. They've hit five three-point shots. Illinois has gone all four beyond the arc. Western Kentucky actually. Fifth seeded Illinois. Is, uh, right now trailing by their largest margin. 5 13. They've hit five threes. Illinois is at none. Plus 15 beyond the arc for the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky actually shooting better from three than from two. Good point. Magley. Karush. Brock tried to defend. He did, but Mareska is right there to vacuum it in and put it in. For Western Kentucky, the 12th seed, the Sun Belt champion. And things are going pretty well right at the moment for Western Kentucky. Magley had no idea that Caruso was streaking down the court. All he was trying to do was throw the ball back inbounds. Illinois over the last five minutes, one of seven from the floor. Here's Jeff Jordan. And Dominique Keller on the fly. Into a couple of defending Hilltoppers, and he makes it go. As Keller hits his first. A guy who is not shy about shooting the basketball. At one point this season, he led the NCAA in shots per minute. Slaughter with the run. McKamey was gambling inside. Great offensive rebound by Caruso. He was fouled as he was spinning outside the lane on the block. Clock at 719. Foul goes on Brock. Did you watch the steal and the subsequent two on the putback by Caruso? Western Kentucky is led by as many as 14. Up now by 12. 719 to play in the first half here in Portland, Oregon. Carouche is at the line. And Carouche is a guy who really provides a lot of energy for this Western Kentucky team, and we have seen that so far in this game. Well, Western Kentucky has out rebounded Illinois by 10. They've out rebounded them on the offensive glass five to nothing. And second chance points, the Hilltoppers six zip over the Alina. Plus the plus 15 points beyond the arc. Well, they've been beating the Illinois defense down the court. It's hard to block out in transition. It's hard to guard in transition. And Western Kentucky has taken advantage of the fact that they've been able to get out in transition. Tisdale to Davis. Pettigrew is defending. Out to Trent Nietzsche. That was not very well executed. Uh, Davis was open. Davis hero for Mendez Valdez, who just checks back in the game. He's got six. Davis has been spot on. He's three and four to start this game for the Illini. You're absolutely right, Kevin. And I think they've got to get Davis more involved in the game. Get him the ball. Here comes Carouche working on Davis and into Tuesday. He's struck by Brock. He's starting to force me a little bit now. He came in and played very well, made a couple of baskets, but he's got to calm down. Good point. Davis wide open because the defensive pedigree fell down. And the rebound by Orlando Mendez Valdez. Pettigrew inside into Tisdale. He hit the net guard, but Pettigrew puts it in. He's got seven points. Can Mendez Valdez pass it or what? Oof. I mean, my heavens. A quarterback would have been pleased with that pass. Nietzsche for three. Late close by Mendez Valdez, and it's picked up now by Anthony Sell. Changes hands, goes by McKinney, takes it to the rack, and gets it to Cole! What a play! Wow. Here's McKinney, hounded by Sally. Brock over Mendez Valdez. Offensive rebound, the first by the Illini, pulled down by Nietzsche. Late arriving defense by Evans. That is a triple. Well, you can't give Trent Meacham that much time. He is an outstanding three-point shooter. Meacham has seven right now. Meacham from beyond the arc, 41%. You're right. Good screen by Pettigrew. Mendez Valdez and finds himself double down low. Western Kentucky does not spend a lot of time throwing that ball around. They know what they're going to do with the two. <laughs> Pretty good precision, though. Now, Mendez Valdez just draws a lot of guys to him and then makes a decision. That time he missed the three. And McKamey the other way. Meacham, Davis, and McKamey. Great cut. Uncovered, not blocked out. He's got four. 
And the Illini to within nine. Timeout Western Kentucky after being down by 14 points. The Illini kicking it up with 4.55 to play. And I think that that's part of the reason why Kent McDonald called that timeout. Illinois was out of it, but they passed the ball very well. And now on a little run, they're back in the game. Western Kentucky by nine. Look at the bottom line there. Rebounds at plus 12. Three-point shooting at plus 12 points. A field goal percentage, which is 46% of the 38% shooting at the Illini. Illinois has got some momentum. Well, they really do because Western Kentucky made a couple of bad decisions on the offensive end, and that allowed Illinois to get easy opportunities. And there's Valdez. Pettigrew with the stream. McKinney watching him. Off to Magley. Guarded by Tisdale. To yeah. rebound by Davis. I'm not sure that you want Magley to be a jump shooter like that. He was off balance. Magley comes out on Tisdale. And Illinois really making a little run here. They're doing it on the defensive end. They finally started to disrupt the Western Kentucky offense. Tisdale over three. McKinney. Oh, there was a nice screen. But it was provided by Brock, which gave him room to fire. And there is a whistle inside with 4-11 to play in the first half. Tisdale has just been tagged with his second personal foul. And Dominic Kelly will take his place for the Illini. And that, you know, it actually might work out that that's not such a bad break for Illinois because right. Keller is a guy who comes in and he's going to shoot the ball. He's going to make things happen. They could be good or they could be bad, but at this point, Illinois, I think, would be happy for a little bit of a shakeup in the way this game is being played. Screen by Magley, where they're looking at the pick and roll there. Keller on the defensive switch goes on Mendez Valdez. Tough Mike shot. Davis, yeah, it was. Mike Davis corrals the loose ball. He's got five rebounds, and McKinney racing the other way for the Illini. Pettigrew comes out on him. Magley picks up a foul as Davis was beginning to maneuver in the top of the circle. 3.43 to play. The Illini down by 14 moments ago. Now to within a 31-22 reach here in Portland, Oregon in round one. shooting 37 percent 43 percent shooting for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky from the Sun Belt Conference and but Illinois was able to exploit that Davis Pettigrew matchup early in the game I think they'd be wise to go back to it there's McKinney switch on defense the defense now of Sally is back on McKinney Dominic Kelly. McKinney's got to get himself turned around looking at the basket the point guard can't have his back to the goal he can't see anything and there's a whistle with 3.23 to play. And the foul goes on Keller for the first time. For Coach Bruce Weber. Tonight on the Late Show, Dave welcomes Billy Crystal plus a special top 10 with Owen Wilson. Then Craig Ferguson's got Will Ferrell. Don't miss CBS Late Night tonight. Dan Bonner and our terrific CBS crew up here in the Pacific Northwest, Kevin Hart. Rose Garden has been filled for every game today. Terrific turnout, great support. Evans is going to set a screen. That means the defensive switch, and Keller goes on Mendez Valdez. Boy, and Mendez Valdez really upset with Evans. He wants him to go to a different spot, and Evans just standing inside. There is A.J. Swatter. He's picked up by Brock, who starts tonight for the injured Chester Frazier. Screen by Pettigrew. Swatter. Had a turnover right there, and Keller comes up with it. Here comes Trent Meacham. Ahead it goes to Brock, and he drives right into the defense of Stephon Pettigrew, and that's an offensive foul. Wipe it away. 2.46 to play. And there's Weber, a one-time assistant coach at Western Kentucky. Years ago under Gene Cady. I like the call. It's a good pass ahead by Meacham. And Pettigrew gets back and draws the charge. Boy, how many times have we seen that today and all year long? Oh, wow. Guys out on the break, you've got to stop and shoot the jump shot. Here's Slaughter and reach in by Brock. Is going in to Stefan Pettigrew, who is out of Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And coming up on the AT&T at the half, a busy day for Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, our newest member, and Seth Davis. They'll take you out for around-the-country live looks at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. They'll get caught up on all the latest tournament news. It's the AT&T at the half from our CBS studios in New York. 
And coming up here in a matter of a couple minutes, with Pettigrew at the free throw line, a 65% free throw shooter. And look at right there, Davis collects the loose ball. Well, Western Kentucky had missed all three of its free throw opportunities, and a couple of them front end to the one and one. Since having that 14 point lead, Western Kentucky has gone scoreless. Illinois has tried to come back, and Lewis Meacham picked up by Mendez Valdez. They certainly have left some points out there with some turnovers and missed free throws, and you wonder if that'll come back to haunt them. Davis a screen to switch on defense. Pettigrew will go on McKamey. Shot clock at four. Dimitri McKamey, a 7 0 run by Illinois. They cut that one time 14 point lead in half. Look at the drive by Slaughter, slashing for two. Wow. He's got seven. He was a blur. Screen by Davis, switch on defense. Here comes McKinney working on Pettigrew and outside. Brock for three, the late close by Slaughter. Rebound by Caruso. And there's Valdez looking for Pettigrew. Beach him the other way. Just a little too high. I don't think Pettigrew got a really good run at that ball. Here's Davis from McKamey. Nice pass by McKamey and Davis, who had some bodies around him, has eight points. Davis has gone four or six. That was great recognition by McKamey. He saw that Mendez Valdez was down inside Garden Davis because Davis runs the floor. Illinois has worked their way back in this game. Defensive switch. Keller goes on Swatter. A couple screens for Mendez Valdez, and now Keller goes on him. It's Carouche over Davis for three. A rebound and a beauty inside pulled down by Jeremy Evans. It's really a nice job. He held the ball high, just bounced on the court, went right back up. Evans went to Sunbelt Conference and field goal percentage at 63%. Slaughter defending, Meacham shooting, and a foul called on A.J. Slaughter. That is his second. 41.8. To play here in the first half. The Illini and at large bit out of the Big Ten. And a 24 9 record. They won 16 last season. They did not go to the tournament, obviously. And they improved their season under Bruce Weber by eight wins. Bruce Weber's guys do not go to the free throw line very much, and Western Kentucky does. But this will be free throw number three for the Illini tonight, and that will equal the Western Kentucky total. So interestingly enough, Western Kentucky, the team that likes to drive the ball to the basket and create things inside, has limited itself really to the perimeter, particularly over the last few minutes. Jeff Jordan comes in for Brock. And we're just talking about this. You can see what the win improvement for Illinois means this year, going back to the tournament. The last NCAA appearance was 07. Lost to Virginia Tech in the first round. Down. Jordan there defensively and Evans with a little sprint. The difference of six seconds, game clock and shot clock winding down our first half here in Port. Carouche, Illinois has done a nice job getting themselves back in this game. An important defensive stand right here. If they can get the ball back and score. Bagley's going to set a screen. Sally goes by Jordan. They dish it off inside and the catch was made by Evans and then he was whacked as he was going to the rack, and that is a Dominique Keller who picks up his second personal foul for the Illini. That was some kind of crossover move by Sally right in front of us. How quick was that? He had called for Mangley to come up and set a screen, but uh, it wasn't necessary. So he said he had the great crossover, and here is Evans at the line. Well, you've watched some tape on Illinois, and, and you've, you've seen him with Chester Frazier and without their defensive ace, Chester Frazier. What, what's the difference you pick up on what they're like with him or without him? The difference is with Chester Frazier, he puts tremendous pressure on the basketball, really is disruptive of the other team's offense, and they simply are not getting that tonight. Then on the offensive end, he can handle the ball. He, he allows uh, Dimitri McKamey to play off the ball where he doesn't have to make quite as many decisions, and I think he's more comfortable in that role. But you can't have that with Frazier on the bench, so everybody's got to adjust. Nine point game. Alex Legion has just come in. Here's Meacham picked up by Sally. It's Keller in the corner over Maresca. A rebound by Mendez Valdez. And that concludes our first half.
plus 12 points beyond the arc for Western Kentucky, who led by as many as 14. Sends it to New York with the AT&T at the half. After these messages, you're watching CBS in the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Your world delivered. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios in New York for AT&T at the half. I'm Greg Gumbel. We are at the break. And Wisconsin leading Illinois by a score of 37-28. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, VCU trails UCLA 37-29. The winner moves on to play Villanova on Saturday. Let's take you to Philadelphia Live. Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. UCLA leading 37-29 early here in the second half in Philadelphia. Josh Ship turns down the three. The three ball being key to the Bruins lead and a foul as Ship drove across the lane. Vishelnikov going down and still on one knee. I didn't see what happened to him and he's having trouble getting to his feet. Looks as if he twisted an ankle. He's writhing in pain as he limps off. VCU has been in a 2-3 zone for most of this second half, trying to protect Larry Sanders a little bit from picking up that third foul. Two minutes gone in the second half. Collison, good ball fake. This is the three. Aboya has it blocked by Sanders. What a difference it makes with Sanders in the game at both ends. Rodriguez for three. Sanders can't tip. Long pass for Schick. Rodriguez to beat. And Schick unable to hit the layup. He thought he was fouled. He was definitely hit by Burgess. And Rodriguez can't answer at the other end with a tray. This is the kind of tempo that BCU would like. They want to get up and down the floor. Oh, what a pass by Collison, and Aboya goes down hard as he's fouled. Here are the brackets in which these two teams are operated in the East region. Villanova winning against American. What a game effort by the Eagles of America. And they had the lead by 14 early in the second half, but Villanova rallied to play either UCLA or VCU. And Texas awaits the winner of the Duke Binghamton game. And uh, the Sweet 16 teams will advance to Boston in this region. Last foul to Joey Rodriguez, his third. Aboya to the line, looking for his fourth point. He's been very serious from day one at the UCLA campus. He wants to get his degree, already has the degree, working on advanced studies. He'd like to go back and be a, a major politician in his country of Cameroon. Almost uh, went to Georgetown. He had committed to Georgetown and changed his mind when Craig Eshrick left, decided to go to the other coast. Well, he's been a big part of UCLA's success, and especially this year. Well, he's really anchored Ben Howland's defense in the middle. There's not a harder worker in the Pac-10 than Alfred Avoy. He's put in his time in games as well. He and Chip uh, hold the record most games ever played by a UCLA Bruin. and not allowing Eric Maynard to get the ball, just face guarding him all over the floor. Collison with two fouls. Rizal and Holiday cut him off. Ten on the shot clock, and it's out of bounds to VCU with ten on the shot clock. And he's getting face guarded like that. Eric Maynard can go set a screen to try to free up a teammate. And he's got to move without the ball. Burgess, he's had a couple of those, the freshman. Now with six points. Well, that was nicely done. Burgess inbounded the ball to Gwynn and immediately stepped to an open area. Oftentimes, the inbounder is the guy that will wind up open. And Holiday misses a layup. UCLA guilty of several missed layups in this game. Roselle at the other end misses the three, and Dragovich drugs it down. <laughs> Burgess with the reach in foul, but you can see how why it's so important to keep Larry Sanders on the floor because he can block and change so many shots. Now watch Burgess here after the inbound. He's going to step right into that open area in the corner, and even though Aboya 
Gets a hand up. Burgess stepped right in and stepping into his shot. He was able to knock it down. Four quick fouls on Virginia Commonwealth University. None whistled against UCLA early in the second half. They played almost four minutes in the half. Aboya taking it inside against Sanders. Can't hit. Sanders clears. Sanders does a nice job of just going straight up and down. He waits till the shooter leaves the floor before he leaves the floor. Sanders with 88 blocks this year had 95 as a freshman. Maynard sees a clear shot and it's a foul against UCLA plus one as Eric Maynard cleverly working his way inside. Well, Dick Enberg, that is just vintage Eric Maynard. Not forcing anything, using the ball screen, going right around Dragovich with great pace. And a foul on Collison. Greg Gumbel in New York with some tournament update information for you. The Duke Blue Devils having things all their own way in Greensboro. Lance Thomas on the dunking end here. The Blue Devils leading Binghamton big. Meanwhile, in Kansas City, Oklahoma all over Morgan State. Juan Patillo on the scoring end of this Sooner play. And the Sooners lead it 50-31. to 31. Back to the Kimber. Well, Greg, probably the most compelling game of the day was uh, LSU and Butler as that game came down to the final minutes and LSU prevailed. Here's our tournament summary. Ty Lawson didn't play. Carolina didn't need him. One big. Memphis now has won 26 in a row. American had won 13 but lost to Villanova here in Philadelphia earlier. And how about Marcus Thornton off the bench and uh, 30 points in the win over Butler. He was outstanding. Well, he's a big time scorer in that LSU team, a veteran team. Two players, Garrett Temple, played in the Final Four in 2006, along with Tasman Mitchell. Eric Maynard at the line for the three-point play, and this is the free throw. Dragovich another rebound. UCLA in four minutes plus of the second half is 0 for 7 from the floor. They're only points three from the free throw line. And Ben Howland electing to stay with the senior point guard, Darren Collison, with those three fouls. Chip hanging in, can't hit the jumper. Over eight, and Dragovich will give the Bruins another chance. Collison turned down the three, takes it in against Sanders, and it's out of bounds off Collison. Well, this is an, a team with very active hands on the defensive end. And right now, with VCU getting the ball back. You're going to see Drew Holiday switch off. On to Eric Maynard to try to protect Darren Collison. They'll guard Rizal. And whatever opportunity they have to go right at Darren Collison, they need to do it. Meanwhile, UCLA generating its offense off turnovers. 14 points scored off turnovers. VCU zero. Let's see if Maynard can take advantage of the freshman. Hand check by Aboya. His second. Team fouls now. Uh, UCLA with two and VCU with four. Five point game, 15 minutes to play. Drew Holiday, a very good defender. He's got long arms, huge hands, but he's still just a freshman. Now a boy switches out. Win the Roselle and now to Sanders who clears out to Maynard. Maynard off balance shot. Doesn't get the bounce. But a good rebound by Gwynn. But Gwynn just stuck with it. Knocked that ball away. And Maynard's so good at those little floaters in the lane. Couldn't get that one to go. Gwynn into the corner. In and out. The result. And Sanders unable to knock in the rebound. And the Bruins head the other way. He's got to grab that. That's not one you can just tip around. He needs to grab that and go up strongly. 11 rebounds to Dragovich on the game has been key to UCLA's lead. Five point the advantage. Collison by Maynard and Maynard was at plenty of time left in the second half of this game and it's UCLA by 5 39 34. Thanks for joining us on AT&T at the half which contrary to what you might have heard earlier Western Kentucky is playing in this game against Illinois and we'll have the second half coming up right after this. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Your world delivered.
Western Kentucky has went by as many as 14 points tonight here at the Rose Garden in Portland, Oregon, Monday on two and a half men. What could turn Charlie from center to saint? Got to see it to believe it. Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. Check out the in-game box score powered by CBS College Sports Network. Cable home for NCAA March Madness. The guards of Western Kentucky have been terrific. A great move right there by A.J. Slaughter. Our coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament will continue after this work from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, Saturn, Jordan, and by Burger King. Kentucky from the Sunbelt Conference, their conference is champion on top of the Illini of Illinois at halftime, 37-28. As we take a look at the first half statistics, 46% shooting for the Hilltoppers. And one of the reasons that they shot the ball that well, Kevin, is they've done an excellent job passing, particularly passing in transition. Orlando Mendez Valdez does a great job seeing Jordan Anthony Salad came off the bench, makes a great pass. And you notice all three of these passes in transition situations. That's why you shoot the ball so well, you get easy shots. There is the senior from San Antonio, Mendez Valdez, out there with Evans, AJ Slaughter. Sergio Carush. Stefan Pettigrew, that's the five out there for the Hilltoppers. Meacham will begin on Mendez Valdez. Man to man defense. Kevin, I thought Western Kentucky had an opportunity to put Illinois away in the first half, and they didn't do it. Switch on defense. Slaughter was matched up against McKinney. Out of bounds it goes. Illinois will have it. They got Brock and Tisdale, Meacham, McKamey, and Davis, the five on the floor for the Illini. Ken McDonald looking for a foul right there, but the official ruled that Slaughter stepped out of bounds. Here comes McKamey inside. Nice knockaway on the shot by Davis. Evans got a hand on it. They put it in as Brock taking the place of the injured. Chester Frazier puts in his fourth point tonight. But good things have happened for Illinois when they've gotten the ball inside to Davis. Despite the block, they were able to get the rebound and score. And I think you'll see the Illini do that as often as they can. Get the ball into Davis. Davis on Karush. It's Evans fighting by Tisdale. Counting for two and a foul. Tisdale was leaning on him. Evans has got six, and Tisdale picks up his third foul for coach Bruce Weber. Good recognition by Evans. He's got Tisdale out at the three-point line. Tisdale simply doesn't move his feet that well. He's not used to guarding guys out there, and Evans, not noted for his driving ability, gets the ball all the way to the goal. Here's Jeremy Evans from Crossett, Arkansas. He is a fine arts major, which is hard to believe because he is such an active player on the floor, but he's very quiet off the floor. Screen by Davis, switch on defense, McKamey, and a screen here is Brock over Pedigree. Karush collects the ball. And there's Valdez, screen by Evans. It's a foul on Illinois. Comes with 18.36 to play. In the second half, put this on Meacham for the second time. Get the impression that Orlando Mendez Valdez is one of those guys who knows when to step on the gas and when to pull the foot off yeah, that's the a gas. Good point. I mean, I like he just really does a nice job seeing the game and reacting to it. A high basketball IQ. Oh, without any question. Green by Pettigrew, switch on defense. Rotate over with Brock now and Mendez Valdez. Here comes Slaughter. McKamey can't control him. Rebound by Brock. Outlet to McKamey. Back on defense, Western Kentucky. They've done a nice job getting back on defense for the most part. There's a foul on the inside. Pettigrew, we've talked before. That's a tough matchup for him in there, trying to go against Davis. 
Pettigrew picks up his second personal foul. Six feet five, 225, but he's matched up against Davis. And while he's got a little bit of a weight advantage against Davis, Davis is 6'9". Tisdale to Davis. Davis is 4 of 7. Brock is 2 of 6. Oh, and they just got Davis. Sure, they'll leave the screen. You got it. Davis picks up his first. Not much argument there from Bruce Weber. You know, illegal screening was a point of emphasis this year during the season, and those points of emphasis always come back up in the NCAA tournament because the officials are trying to advance as well as the team. Absolutely. Only 69 were chosen from across the country. All of college basketball. The 69 best. They're graded. They have to take an online test. Constantly surveyed. Constantly analyzed. And so the best of the best in this tournament. Outside Karouche for three. Late close by Davis. Karouche has got eight, his second three tonight for Western Kentucky. You know, he's only a 23% three-point shooter. Oh, so. what a pass by McKinney inside and caught by Brock, who slid underneath. And getting the ball inside has been the solution for Illinois. Slaughter watches the Evans screen, picked up by McKinney. Mendez Valdez with Meacham defending him. Switch. Pedigree. Slaughter contorts. Rebound Tisdale. You can't worry about the fact that Tisdale's there. You've got to carry the ball to the basket. Tisdale just collected his first rebound. Here is a block shot from outside. The defense by Carouche picked up by Mendez Valdez. He has a screen from Pedigree. A.J. Slaughter open late close by Davis. And that is a foul. Clock at 16:46. The foul on Carouche for the first time for Western Kentucky. Illinois, a team that does a great job passing the ball. The back door cut by Brock. Defense fell asleep that time. And DJ Magley will check back in the game, leaving as Evans. Back in as well as Anthony Sally, and goes at the place of Carouche. Western Kentucky at 24 and 8. Wine Eye from the Big Ten at 24 and 9. Davis a screen. Screen by Tisdale. Pick and roll. Each of the pass. Tisdale can't knock it in. A twist around the floor out of bounds it goes. And 1627 to play here in the second half. It's been an interesting NCAA tournament. Congratulations to the University of Michigan, John Beeline. They win their first tournament game since 1998. UConn, a big win. They didn't miss Jim Calhoun. We certainly wish him the best. We hope he gets over his illness and back very quickly. And BYU, if they get matched up against Texas A&M in next year's tournament, they're going to file a complaint. Here comes Sally. It's outside for Swatter. The three, it's good. Another triple. And plus 18 points beyond the arc for Western Kentucky, his second three. Three for A.J. Swan. Each in face in the double. It's intercepted by D.J. Magwood. Lumbering down court <laughs> from behind. Meacham got him, and here come the Illini. It's Brock back on defense, Western Kentucky, and here's Tuesday. I don't know that he was going fast to be <laughs> fast enough to be lumbering. <laughs> to steal the ball, that's great. Stop and that's give right. it to somebody who can actually dribble. <laughs> Uh, we've been doing a lot of games together. <laughs> Doesn't take much of it. McKinney behind the back and Slaughter was knocked off balance. Wow. McKinney with a dazzling array to get that little uh, buffer between him and the defense. He's got eight points. You know, McKinney shows you flashes. He's only a sophomore, so there's still a lot of potential there. Just really puts a lot of pressure him to not have Chester Fra on him to not have Chester Frazier in the lineup. Pettigrew meets in the late close, another three. Boy, they are bombing away. Is Western Kentucky from beyond the arc, and they've carved their biggest lead into the Illini tonight. They've got eight three-point baskets already, eight for 16, another wide open. Look how much time he has. Big lead. Last season, Western Kentucky wears the 12th seed, and they took care of Keno Davis and the fifth seeded Drake Bulldogs. But Ken McDonald's guys have themselves in position to do exactly the same thing this year. Eight three point hits for Western Kentucky, one for Illinois. That's a difference of 21 points in a 15 point game. 
Brock tries inside, goes around Megley, and watches it go down. Boy, that was a terrific mid-air move by Calvin Brock, a senior from Chicago Simeon High School. Magley picked up the third. Brock with some mid-air acrobatics. Greg Gumbel in New York, Western Kentucky with a 13-point lead on Illinois. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, UCLA holding on to the lead against Virginia Commonwealth. Let's go there live. Dick Inberg, Jay Billis. UCLA by eight and another free throw for freshman Drew Howard. 49-36, Western Kentucky's on top. Within 13, Illinois is trailed by as many as 15. Mendez Dallas picked up by Mitchell. There's a Calvin Brock foul. His momentum carries him into A.J. Swanee. That is the fourth on Brock. Western Kentucky doing a great job spreading the floor, moving the ball, moving the players around. I think this is an important stretch of this game. We were in a similar situation in the first half where Western Kentucky was up 14 and Illinois was actually able to cut it back to five. Let's see if Western Kentucky now can keep their foot on the throttle. Jeff Jordan takes the place of Calvin Brock for Illinois. Approaching 14 to play in the second half. A.J. Slaughter. Jordan fights through the screen. There's Sally. They go inside to Jeremy Evans, defended by Dominique Keller, who picks up the Illinois foul inside, and Keller is tagged with his third. Free throw shooting in the game has been very similar. Three of six for Western Kentucky and three of five from the stripe for the Illini. Evans at the line. He started all but one game this season. 74% free throw shooter. Helps when your big guy can shoot free it, throws uh, well. That's, that's a big advantage, isn't it? I think that facial expression by Calvin Brock sort of sums up the way it's gone for Illinois today. Very, very discouraging. And I'm telling you, it's going to be tough to come back when you've got backcourt players of the time Western Kentucky possesses. Good point. It's all about guards in this tournament. There's one right here, Jeff Jordan, picked up by Swan. I think the job of the guards from Illinois right at the moment is to get the ball to Bowman. Oh, oh my. Mendez Valdez goes crashing into Jeff Jordan, who just got the pass, and Orlando <laughs> picks up his first foul. Yeah, he goes palms up to his coach and says, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't really mean to do that, but Mendez Valdez going after the ball. You know, he's got the kind of game that it just looks to me like when he's 40, Playing at the CYO, it'll be the same kind of game. <laughs> he's not the most athletically gifted guy in the no, world. No, he's but not. Boy, he sure knows how to play basketball. And creative. Isn't he Absolutely. a creative kid? My goodness. He's some guy at 40 who'll be driving 19-year-olds crazy with his ability to handle the ball. He'll be great with his offhand, as he is now. Here's Trent Meacham and Florida will pick him up on the perimeter. Kamey is guarded by Sally. And Carouche is watching Jordan take it inside with the drive into Evans. Rebound by Carouche. With another rebound, he's collected 10. Evans a pretty good shot blocker. Not on the same level as Jarvis Bernardo, but still, he does a nice job in there. A couple blocks a game. Bernardo, the number one shot blocking champion in college basketball for Mississippi State. Sally drops it off inside, looking for Jeremy Evans. And he was blocked out with a foul going on Meacham for the third time. Kevin, it's very interesting the dynamic that we're seeing in this game now. Western Kentucky made all those three-point shots. Now, Illinois, Bruce Weber's had his defense push out to defend it, and as a result, Western Kentucky's adjusted. They're driving the ball at the basket. Sally couldn't find the handle. As they bring in Alex Legion. This is a point in the game where Western Kentucky needs, they don't want to get conservative, but they don't want to go crazy either. They need to keep playing the way they have played at the same pace. It's a very nice tempo for Western Kentucky, all managed by the backcourt. Legion comes in for Jeff Jordan. Here is the McKinney drive, knocked away by Carouche, among others. Pettigrew gets it off to Sam. 
How many times down the court has it been since Davis has touched the ball? Wow, that's a good question. And he's shot the ball well. He's 4 and 7 with 8 points for the Illini. Slaughter working around a couple screens. Throws it over Dominique Keller. Here comes Legion with the rebound. He flies the other way. Meets him for three. Good. He splashes the three outside for the Illini. His second three, he's got 12 when he hits double digits. This team usually wins. In fact, when Trent Meacham has been over 10 points, Illinois is 18 and 0. That goes back to last season. Let's see if the Illini can build upon that. They're down by 11. They trailed by 15. Water, Meacham defending. Picked up by Davis. Here's that run you were talking about. With McKamey dropping it off to Legion over Pettigrew. Rebound by Cruz with his 11th. And uh, Keller can't save it. But good hustle nonetheless by Dominique. It's really amazing. Every time Western Kentucky gets a little bit impatient on offense, Illinois able to get out. That's only their second three-point basket of the game. But Meacham very capable from beyond the three-point arc, as is McKamey. So Illinois has the three-point weaponry to get back in this game. Still plenty of time. As you just saw the three-point story. Full court pressure by the Illini. And it pays off. Unsuspecting Western Kentucky will throw it away with the turnover. Boy, miscommunication right there. Oh, Keller was open, though. Here comes McKamey taking it into three. Keller over Mendez Valdez. It's a nine-point deficit for the Illini. And Western Kentucky is not hit from the field in over three and a half minutes. And here comes A.J. Slaughter. Defended by Meacham. Karush. And they've played well offensively in the half court. They've gotten a lot of movement. They've been stagnant the last couple of trips. Slaughter. Oh, what a great pass inside! And Karush drops the sledgehammer! Get you back in sync offensively. And a steal on defense as it's uh, vacuumed in by Stefan Pettigrew. Wow. <laughs> Screen by Pettigrew. Slaughter lost the ball and retrieved by Pettigrew. Mendez Valdez guarded by Keller. He slides by him. He looks inside. Another flush. This time, Jeremy Evans. He's got 10. Kevin, how good is Mendez Valdez? He kept his body right up against the defender. Wow. Here comes Keller and Evans defending. Nice move by Dominic Keller, who is a terrific junior college player coming out of Lee College in Baytown, Texas. Western Kentucky finding it here. Here is Karush. And then Mendez Valdez getting it off to Jeremy Evans. Greg Gumbel in New York updating for you the Bush League tacky play of the night, courtesy of Amir Ali of Morgan State with the takedown of Blake Griffin for his efforts. Ali was asked to leave the premises with a mere two points. That's what he contributed to Morgan State. Oklahoma leads at 77-52. Back to Portland. Greg, thank you. There's a force in the 10 points apiece for Western Kentucky. Carouge, Pettigrew, Evans, and Swatter. The game high. 12 points right now for Trent Meacham of the Illini. Mendez Valdez with seven. And since that was the seventh team foul, Western Kentucky going to have the opportunity probably to go to the line a lot here in the last 10 minutes and 28 seconds. Jeff Jordan comes back in the game for McKinney for Illinois. Meacham for three over Mendez. Valdez another three. He's got 15. And again, he's capable of getting very hot. And there's still lots of time left in the game. It's only a 10-point game. That is his third three for the Illini tonight. And now provides the defense on Mendez Valdez. Jordan is on Pettigrew. They switch on defense. Jordan is on Slaughter. And the shot clock is on its way down to 10. Pedigree. Here's Slaughter on the fly over Tisdale and tapped in. A 
on the side. I don't know if it's Karush or Pettigrew, but they come in there. Looks like Karush gets the deuce. Boy, Karush has had a big, big game tonight. Double double. Alex Legion lost it. Some good defense inside by Jeremy Evans. Evans has been a force defensively inside with his ability to block shots or change them. He's been credited with four blocks in the game, but I think he's changed a couple more than that. Mendez Valdez over meets him for three. He was off balance on the fly. And he knocks down the shot. That's his third three. He's got 11. Kevin, he got his body completely turned and square to the basket before he let that one go. He really plays the game under control. It's Dominique Keller inching his way into the defense of Stefan Pettigrew. He's got eight. He's at three in a row. Here's Mendez Valdez just taking over the game. Eight rebound advantage so far for Western Kentucky. Slaughter go drive into Jeff Jordan. Now that was a tough shot. You know, Slaughter and Mendez Valdez complement one another very well because they're sort of opposites where Mendez Valdez just always looks like he's going in a very calculating fashion. Slaughter will put his head down and just go. Here's Meacham for three, and he knocks in another from outside. Trent Meacham has been a terrific scorer for Bruce Weber. He is four of six on three-point shooting for the Illini, keeping him in the game. NCAA March Madness On Demand is streaming every game from the NCAA Championship online for free. Watch any game from the tournament live at NCAA.com. With Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan, Meacham, who has had a 26-point game earlier in his career against Weber State, has tonight put an 18. Four he's, of six from the three-point mark. He's hit every one of his three-point attempts here in the second half, and you are correct, Kevin. He is keeping Illinois in the game. Each about three is four of six. Here is a slaughter three. <laughs> and a shove and a foul. Davis. Davis will pick it up. Number two. Timeout. Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year is Orlando Mendez Valdez. And he has shown that he can shoot the ball. The leadership ball is there. The rest in traffic. The ability to penetrate to the basket and pass. Getting squared up. Taking tough shots. He makes open shots. He makes tough shots. He just really controls the pace of the game for Western Kentucky. Here's Jeremy Evans at the free throw line for the Hilltoppers. They are outscoring Illinois from beyond the arc by 15 points. They've collected eight more rebounds. And Illinois, the number two assist percentage team in college basketball. With the move there by Keller, and he draws the offensive foul. The number two assist percentage team in college basketball, Illinois. Ten assists and ten turnovers. Ten assists on 22 made baskets. So the, the flow that has been so much a part of Illinois' system. A little disrupted tonight by uh, I think Kentucky. I think a little disrupted and I think part of the reason is again and we'll, I don't know how many times we can say it because it's it uh, has an effect Chester Frazier not in the game out with that broken hand Pettigrew big time shot inside hit that Keller picks up his fifth and final personal foul and there's Mendez Valdez once again finding the open man cutting to the basket and one of the things that Mendez Valdez does very well, as he and Pettigrew congratulate one another, he gets the ball to a guy at the optimum time that he is open. You know, he, it's not a second early, it's not a second late, and Chester Frazier is a guy who did the same thing for Illinois, and you can see how upset he is with that hand injury. Again, he had surgery on it, not able to go. Got to be very discouraging for Chester Frazier. Illinois came into this uh, game in Portland tonight losing three of their last four. And Western Kentucky came in with a winning streak of seven consecutive games, 11 of 12, and winning 15 of their last 17 games as Keller is gone. And Tisdale, Mike Tisdale, a sophomore from Riverton, Illinois, will check in. 
And losing Keller at this point might be an important factor because he's a guy who can put some points on the board, and that's what you need. You need to score and catch up. Dead group can't hit. He was the state of Kentucky's Mr. Basketball as a senior. And Stefan Dedegroup from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. McKinney back in. Tisdale. Big night for Micha. Mendez Valdez is defending a little mid-range shot right there, and Peter Bruce knows it. And another problem for Illinois tonight, they have literally gotten nothing from Tisdale. Missed all four of his shots, only has one rebound, has not scored. Pettigrew has his third rebound at the other end. He's got the ball right now, defended by Mike Davis, and by Tisdale, and another Illinois foul. Clock at 6.43. A sizable 14-point lead for Western Kentucky. They've loved as many as 15 in the game as Tisdale is tagged with his fourth personal. Pettigrew will be at the line. And Western Kentucky has been attacking Kentucky already in the double bonus, although, although this was a two-shot shooting foul. But Western Kentucky only has four team fouls in this half. I told you before that Pettigrew was the state of Kentucky's Mr. Basketball. He wanted to go to UK, but they didn't want him. So he comes to Western. And he is the first Kentucky Mr. Basketball to join this program since 1984. As Cole comes in for Tisdale. Cole making his first appearance. Bill Cole, sophomore from Peoria, Illinois. Meacham. Mendez Valdez on him. Mendez Valdez just trying to stay with him, keep him from shooting the three. Yep. That's the danger at this point. If he drives by and gets a two, it doesn't really matter. Cole outside to McKamey. Rebound collected by Mangley, who just checked in the game for Western Kentucky. You know, Meacham is not going to beat you two at a time right now. He's got to have three, so that's a great job defensively by Mendez Valdez. Pettigrew into Cole. Rebound by Magley. Tap in is up and in by Stephon Pettigrew. Greg Gumbel in New York will keep you updated on what's happening with Western Kentucky and Illinois, but in Philadelphia, under a minute and a half to play, VCU and UCLA. VCU threatening to make it a one-point game. Let's join Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. 63-62. And the pressure on. Oh, Raider almost tackled Collison, no whistle. And that one knocked out of bounds by uh, Larry Sanders. Had long arms of Sanders, as we told you earlier. His wingspan is 7 feet 7 inches. He's 6'10 in height. And UCLA has to make sure they come to the ball, run the ball right into their hands. Because VCU is very active defensively. And now it's the two great point guards, Collison being guarded by Maynard. Holiday with 110 on the wing. Nobody moving for UCLA. They're content with the lead to let the clock go down that will run out ball screen. Under a minute to play into a play and the foul. And I believe that'll be all for Sanders. Well, it might be uh, Gwynn that got the whistle. It was. Yes, T.J. Gwynn picks up the foul as third. And Aboya, and uh, if you're going to foul a Bruin on the floor, apparently Aboya's two out of three. I'll tell you, I saw him live at Stanford when the Cardinal fouled him late, and he hit every free throw down the stretch. No, a crier that trickles in. 64, 62, 10 points for Aboya. Now, one of the ways that Alfred Aboya shows his toughness is even when tired, he steps to the free throw line late in the ball game, and he knocks him down. Both of them off the front of the rim, the backboard, and down. 65, 62, 57 seconds left. Under a minute to play, a brief time out there. We'll keep you posted on what happens. Let's get you back to Portland, where Western Kentucky leads Illinois. At the 428 mark here in Portland, Oregon, Western Kentucky has beaten Illinois. You just in the background there saw Chester Frazier with the Broken bone in his surgically repaired right hand. He was as good a defensive player as the Big Ten Conference had this season. And 
without him and what he can do on both ends of the floor, Lynar still searching for some identity. Here is Mike Davis. And taking Frazier's place was brought to back to Davis from point blank range. He puts it in. He has got a five of eight shooting night in his first basket of the second half. He's got 10 for Illinois. You know, it's, it's funny, Davis, uh, you talk about five of eight. With the way Davis has shot the ball, he needed more shots than he has gotten tonight. He's only taken two shots in the second half, and he's made them both. Greg Gumbel, once again, let's take you back to Philadelphia. 57 seconds on the clock, UCLA by three. We dismiss the Eagles and we'll await the winner of this one. And it's going to come down to the final shots, apparently, as Maynard takes it inside and he's fouled. Well, what a smart move by Eric Maynard when he got the ball 57 seconds left on the clock. No need to simply go for a three. You can take it in and go to the rim. Terrific little spin move and getting behind Collison going right in to the body and seeking out the contact with Aboya. And it's Aboya's fourth foul. Eric Maynard looking for his 20th point tonight. Ooh, all the way around a couple of turns. 65-63, 48 long seconds left in Philadelphia. And they're now 9 for 12 from the line tonight. And it's back to a one-point UCLA lead. Timeout, 48 seconds to go. 48 seconds to go there. A timeout will bring you back when they come back onto the court. Back to Portland, Kevin and Dan. Another turnover. A little sloppy now, Western Kentucky. Took all the time. Nope, we rolled out of bounds. <laughs> 305 to play as you see the hustle from the Illini not giving up, but they've been playing from behind most of the game. Trailing now. 70 57. Bruce Weber is really ticked off as you can see. Mentioned this back in the first half, but he actually began his coaching career as an assistant at Western Kentucky under Gene Cady. He then, of course, went on for some terrific seasons at Purdue. Meacham, slow to get up, but eventually gets to his feet. So here, Greg Gumbel at 70 57. Let's send it back to you in New York. All right, Kevin, thank you. They're back on the court in Philadelphia. UCLA by one. 48 seconds to play. Dickenberg, Jay Billis. Into Josh Ship. Collison now with uh, Ed Nixon picking him up defensively. All right, it's holiday, though. Ship with Burgess. Nixon, Hawk, and Holiday. 29, 28, 27 on the clock. Collison now and Maynard. Here are the two stars in the backcourt. Maynard of BCU matched against Darren Collison. Eight, seven, six. Collison inside. And it's spotted away by Sanders. Dragovic fires a desperation. Shot clock violation with 11.6 to go. BCU with a chance to win it. And this is why you want to keep Larry Sanders on the floor. When he doesn't foul out, 22-3 and three for VCU on the season. And now, for a senior that loves the big moment, it's all about Eric Maynard with the chance to beat the Bruins in Philadelphia. Their game reset the winner to advance to play Villanova on Saturday 13 seconds to go UCLA led in the middle of the second half 55 44 and that was around the eight minute mark VCU battling back as did Villanova to defeat American earlier and now it's the Rams ball with a chance to win it they have not been ahead in this second half and uh, haven't led in the game 
since 23-22 in the opening half. Now, what do you do here? It's obviously it's going to be the Mainer, isn't it? Well, you it, VCU wants to get the ball into the hands of Eric Mainer right away and let him bring the ball up and make a winning play. But for Ben Howland and his staff, right now the task is keep the ball out of his hands. And whether they put somebody on the ball or not, they don't need to press full court, but they've got to keep it out of his hands. I'd put two guys on Eric Maynard and make sure he can't catch it. Collison with four fouls has been hawking Maynard throughout the night. They're going to set up Sanders to use him as a pick, probably for Maynard. Dragovich and Collison both with their eyes on Maynard, and they do get it to Burgess. Burgess quickly to Maynard with nine seconds. Collison on him. Here comes Maynard with three, with two, with one. UCLA lives to fight another day, 65-64. Back to Portland, we rejoin Kevin and Dan. Meacham, Rock at the line, and Davis. This is an 11-2 run by the Alina. And it's an eight-point game. Hundes, Valdez, picked up by Jeff Jordan. A screen by Pettigrew. A.J. Slaughter. Now Jordan is on him defensively. Jeff Jordan picks up a foul that is the first on him. And if you're Illinois, you really don't have any choice. You've got to be extremely aggressive. Jordan did a nice job keeping Slaughter in front, but there was a little too much contact. Now you got to make three. Uh, now you, now you got to make free throws to salt the game away. Taking advantage of six turnovers by Western Kentucky in their last seven possessions, fighting back from a 17 point deficit. 146 to play here. Why not out of the Big Ten and at large berth? Number five seeded in the South Regional and the 12th seeded Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Three possession game. Here's McCamian picked up by Swanee. Meacham has been terrific from three-point territory for the Illini, as has Cole, who maneuvers by the defense of Evans. Ball is sticking down, McKinney with it. Meacham picked up by Mendez Valdez. Takes it inside on Pettigrew. And that is a timeout, as Illinois has worked themselves back in this game with some terrific defense and clutch shooting. And Meacham has been right there. One of the five Western Kentucky starters and double figures. He's got the double double with 14 and 11. Trent Meacham from Champaign grew up there, always wanted to play for the Illini, has been keeping them alive with his shooting, especially from three point territory. He leads Illinois with 20 points. Full court pressure by the Illini, and this has caused some problems as Sally was hemmed in with no place to go and calls time. 121 to play. Tonight, Gonzaga took care of Akron 77-64. So the winner of this game between Illinois and Western Kentucky will play the Zags on Saturday here in Portland. And Bruce Weber's guys refusing to quit. They're on a 13-3 run. Was 68-51 with 4-10 to play. And that ball hit the side. Sure in. Jeff Jordan. I think it was touched by Illinois, so that should be Western Kentucky's ball. It was tipped, and you're right. It is Illinois' ball. Much to the chagrin of Ken McDonald, the Hilltoppers coach. Well, the, the officials just didn't see that one. That ball was tipped. I believe it was by Davis, and it hit the sideline. Bill Cole checks back in the game for the Illini, taking the place of Jeff Jordan. Illinois comes into the tournament having lost three of their last four, and Western Kentucky comes in having won seven consecutive games as the Sun Belt champion. And time with 118 to play. See, now what they've got to do is they've got to go back and look at the clock because 
The only way that can be Illinois' ball is if nobody touched it, so no time should have run off the clock. I believe that Davis hit that ball, and, and then it went out of bounds. Now the Illinois player who caught the ball stepped out of bounds, but the ball was already out of bounds. It hits the side, and does Davis touch the ball? Boy, I think he does. That ball starts one way and goes another. And if the ball was not touched, and that's the only way it can be Illinois ball, then there has to be a minute and 21 seconds left in the game. Well, just look at Davis's reaction. When he deflected the pass, he, he basically put his arms down, feeling that it was easily going out of bounds. Watch yeah, him. Clearly, See, yeah. clearly he hit yeah. that ball. But if the, the ruling that none of the officials saw it, and so, uh, you know, that, that kind of thing happens. But if the ruling is that it's Illinois ball, then there has to be a minute and 21 seconds left in the game. Illinois shooting 45% from the floor and 49% shooting for Western Kentucky. Illinois missing their Chester Frazier who is the defensive ace and a igniter on offense. Wanna see that? I don't understand this because there was a minute and 21 seconds left and if nobody touched the ball, how can there be a minute and 20 left? Legion takes it inside. And he finds Brock. It's an Illinois run of 15 to 3. Timeout taken as A.J. Slaughter was in a straight jacket down low, and Mendez Valdez, their starting point guard, has got a spasm and a cramp. We'll take a break. The senior from San Antonio, Orlando, Mendez Valdez, the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year with the cramp, as you can see. And he went down immediately. Now this is after the timeout, and he's got a cramp, and he goes down, as you say, Kevin. And talk about things going from bad to worse for Western Kentucky. Mendez Valdez out there limping. Western Kentucky had this game won. They did. But then, I mean, they just kept turning it over. It's amazing what Illinois has been able to do for some turnovers. That's a good point. Western Kentucky has turned it over seven times in the last three minutes. This yeah. game was over. Full court pressure by the Illini and picked up by Pettigrew, and here comes Sally. Brock is on him defensively with the crossover. Sally tries to get it past, and he does. AJ Swan. 11 of Illinois' last 15 points have come off turnovers. With under a minute to play on the shot clock, now showing 14. They want to foul now. Jordan is on Slaughter. Sally got a screen, Mendez Valdez for three. And the rebound through Meacham, picked up by Brock. McKinney the other way, Sally with the ball. It's goaltending. It is counted for two. And Illinois with 32.8 to play. They have no timeouts. Is down 71-68. Now if the ball hits the backboard, which it does, and is above the rim, that's goaltending. Sally is not tall nor long. But he did get the hand on the ball right there. And in a game which Western Kentucky was cruising with, leading 68-51 with 4-10 to play, has come in question. The Illini playing well. Seventeen three run by Illinois using full court pressure, forcing Western Kentucky turnovers. It was 68-51 with a little over four to play. And as Valdez will inbound, Davis will be in front of him. 32.8 seconds to play in regulation. Launching it deep, Pettigrew against McKamey at the other end. Foul will go to the free throw line. With 30.5 on the clock. That's a really a break for Illinois that McKamey, you know, if he's going to commit that foul, he's got to try to steal the ball. He can't let Pettigrew get that ball up on the board. They really get a break here that Pettigrew misses the shot. Pettigrew only a 65% free throw shooter. On the night, he is one for four. Now he's going to have two shots. If he misses them both, remember, it's a one possession game. A lot more life all of a sudden on that Illinois bench. This is an amazing turnaround. The winner will take on Gonzaga here in Portland on Saturday afternoon. Jeff Jordan is out, and Bill Cole 
Bowling will be shuffled in by Coach Bruce Weber of the Illini. There goes Brock. Tisdale is in with McCamey and Meacham and Davis. That's the Illini five. Swatter, Mendez, Valdez, Pettigrew, Sally, and Evans. All in there for the Hilltoppers. Two big ones. Those are big free throws. Now you get the ball down the court quickly. You don't have to get a three, but whatever you do, you got to do it quickly. Meacham by Mendez Valdez with the tie inside the paint. And a timeout by Illinois in 23 seconds to play. In a three-point game. It was 17 a handful of minutes ago. Trent Meacham has been terrific with 22. Mendez Valdez getting some work on that right calf by the training staff of Western Kentucky. Well, both calves during the entire oh, yeah. timeout. He's over there trying to stretch out those calves and the training staff working on him. And if you're Western Kentucky, you know, you had that 17 point lead, but with the way they've handled the pressure, you just can't feel comfortable yet. With still 23 seconds left in the game. Mendez Valdez to inbound. A.J. Slaughter has it. Brock is defending. Help Gallup the other way. And uh, reaching in Illinois. 16.3 seconds left on our second half clock. And Slaughter, who is one of two from the free throw line, was fouled by Davis, who picks up his third for Illinois. And Gonzaga, the fourth seed, is awaiting the winner here. Again, two shots. Now this one, yes, when you miss that first one in this situation, and there becomes there comes a lot of pressure with this second one. No timeouts for Illinois. Slaughter is a 77% free throw shooter. He has missed his last two free throws. 16.3 to play. Huge. Oh, you don't have time to do this. No. Got to get it and got to fight. Meacham into Mendez Valdez. Again, he dives inside. He's got 24. The other way, Evans. Throws it inside. Western Kentucky will advance. With .9 to play, Sally had the ball, was playing dodgeball with it. Western Kentucky is held off the Illini. And Orlando Mendez Valdez with a great pass down the court. And Evans gets possession of the basketball. And then Western Kentucky does a nice job moving it around. Now, there's still 0.9 yep. seconds left in the game. And so if Sally makes only one of these two, then Illinois still has a chance to tie the game with a, you know, how many times have you seen somebody throw the Absolutely. ball three quarter court? It's not an impossible thing, highly improbable. And if he misses them both, then that could cost you the game. Fighting off cramps is still Orlando Mendez Valdez. Sally at the line, 70% free throw shooter. Be very hard if he misses this this one for Illinois to control it in time to get off that three-quarter court shot. Western Kentucky has taken 15 more free throw attempts tonight than the Illini. That's it. Western Kentucky advances. They'll take on Gonzaga. The 12th seed Hilltoppers have defeated the 5th seeded Illini of Illinois. Chevy players of the game, Orlando Mendez Valdez with 11 points and seven rebounds and six assists. Trent Meacham with a terrific night, 24 points, including four threes. And for Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan saying so long from the Rose Garden in Portland. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York after these messages. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.
Welcome back to our studios, everyone, as we continue to travel the road to the Final Four, powered by Pontiac. We remind you, we have a whole slate of games coming your way tomorrow. In our first wave of games coming around noon Eastern time, look for North Dakota State making its first trip to the NCAA tournament against defending champion Kansas. Then at about 2.30 or so Eastern time, top seed Pittsburgh is in action against East Tennessee State. In prime time, right around 7 o'clock tomorrow, number 10 USC against number 7 Boston college and in our final wave of games tomorrow night number two michigan state will be taking on robert morris pretty good game today all over the board top four seeds went eight and oh what was your favorite game of the day uh the lsu butler game really stood out for me when you think about lsu now matching up against north carolina they're a team with tasman mitchell and marcus store and they have the kind of offensive firepower that's given north carolina trouble in the past well i thought the best game of the day was ucla's escape over vcu a very fascinating second round game coming up between ucla and villanova but for me the most interesting game of the day memphis they were about tied with cal state northwood seven minutes remaining in the game, I think maybe their confidence was a little shaken today. I'll be curious to see how they respond in their second round game against Maryland. I'll tell you, probably the most talked about play tomorrow will be the one that occurred in the Oklahoma game. Oklahoma beating Morgan State 82-54, but here, Amir Ali of Morgan State flipped Blake Griffin over for his trouble. He was ejected from the game. After the game, Tim Brando talked with Blake Griffin about it. Did you hurt your lower back by trying to save your head on the flip by Ali? Because it appeared a cumulative effect got to you going to a timeout with a little over three minutes left. You collapsed over there. I, I got hit on my tailbone a little bit in my back. My back had kind of been giving me a little bit of trouble, but my tailbone kind of got took the took the worst part of that fall. I'm guessing Blake Griffin will be in the lineup when they play again on Saturday. We remind you, for a recap of all the day's madness, check out NCAA March Madness highlights powered by Pontiac coming up next on the CBS College Sports Network, the new pulse of college sports. Coming up for most of you tonight on The Late Show with David Letterman. Dave welcomes Billy Crystal, plus a special top ten with Owen Wilson. And then Craig Ferguson's guest is Will Ferrell. Don't miss CBS Late Night right after your late local news. 16 first-round games down, 16 more to go. We will resume the madness at noon Eastern time tomorrow. For Greg, for Seth, for all of us at CBS, we'll see you then.